Yeah, so now the question that our viewers might be having right now is, what does basketball have to do with crypto? Well, if you are a fan of the NBA, I would assume that at some point you have seen some advertisement for Coinbase. And I come to realize that Coinbase is in fact the sole crypto sponsor with the NBA and the only people like exclusive cryptocurrency partner. So on top of that, they've expanded their partnership agreements. It is the... Welcome back, everybody, to another week of your favorite crypto podcast, Sometimes Crypto, the unscripted crypto podcast. Hey, yo, hey, we're back for another week of crypto wisdom and crystal crypto awesomeness. I almost said crystal like third. Crystal. You know what I'm saying what the, the th third week, third week of October. And it, I wonder how we're doing today. Uh, we got one more week to go before October is officially over. Um, Halloween's right around the corner. And uh, with that, we should probably check out how crypto, how Bitcoin is doing. Seeing if uh, we're in the green still. Do you remember what you said? I, I don't remember what I said. Well, actually, I kind of do. I kind of do. So I messed up. Uh, I didn't put uh, I, I put two different colors for where we said it was going to be, but I did not put our names. I'm oh, assuming yeah. I, I, I'm assuming I, I know which one, one yours is, though. The upper one, the upper one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, mine's was the higher one for sure. <laughs> I know it was. So Alex said we'll be above 70s or at 70s. We got close. Mm hmm. Throughout the week, we since we recorded, Bitcoin got to 69,600 and some change in that range. I said mm -hmm. it was going to get to 68,800 respect, 6, respectfully and bounce around, which it did. It did do that for a little bit. However, we have pulled back all the way down to current price, 65,800. Which at this wow. point in time is a current support zone, and we're in a three eight two, so we are in a support area. We could hold here, which would be ex which which is extremely bullish if we hold. <laughs> Very bullish if we hold. If we hold this, this we level, if we fall, we'll be falling to sixty three, back to a two hundred uh, day moving average. So practically zero. Practically, yeah, the market is <laughs> that's zero. Yeah, yeah, we're we're at zero at that price range, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, I love I love how like Bitcoin drops a couple percent, like poor, like fractions of a percentage, and everyone's like, "Oh my God, Bitcoin's going going to zero. <laughs> but we're buying back at twelve thousand. Yeah, I'm I haven't looked at this, but I'm pretty sure we've been hovering in the sixties which we, of course we have much longer than we did last cycle and the same applies to the fifties mm -hmm. where I think we're at a higher like average price. We, we've had, a, we've had, yeah, we've had an extremely long period of accumulation where it's just hovering around the same price. But yeah, guys, we're about, we're about to break out. Like it, it's, it's mm -hmm. inevitable. October is almost ending. And then we got, I forgot it was November. I forgot what they called November. Oh, moon, moon ever? I don't know. Irrelevant. Moon, moon November? Yeah, something like that. That's funny. But yeah, well, so Bitcoin's we, still holding. We'll everything's up though. I mean, everything not up, but a lot of things are retesting weekly, daily breakouts, unfortunately. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Bitcoin dominance uh, has not dropped. You, by the way, Bitcoin dominance is still on the upper, on the up and up. It's it's still climbing up. It has it's it's it, it's come down from the from peak, but it's still uh, it's still high. We need it to go down so alts can run. Mm -hmm. If you want your alts to run, we need dominance to go down. Ideally, price stays up. Also, price goes up. Yeah, dominance comes down. Price goes up. That's a recipe for for awesomeness. Uh, 
for rocket fuel. That's Literally. What the recipe's for. That's what Elon uses to pump his rockets. <laughs> well, um, that being said, if you're interested in uh, hearing if we're what we predict prices will be next week, obviously we weren't right this week. Um, I was right. So that's. Oh, no, I was wrong. Well, they yeah, didn't stay there. You're right. The, yeah, the it didn't thing stay is, it has to be I, there by the time we record. Yeah, you're right. We'll set um, more rules to this at the end of this episode. Yeah, like more guidelines. Uh, we should. We yeah. We should. We should add more guidelines. Uh, this is more, more, more guidelines. structure. But uh, we'll, <clears throat> we will be giving a, a price prediction towards the end later on. It's not quite at the end because um, we don't want to keep you waiting that long. <laughs> at, no. at least last episode wasn't quite at the end. That being said, um, the Bitcoin ETFs did have for the first time in seven days not that long uh net outflows yesterday so w- there was a lot of money leaving the etfs uh on tuesday october 22nd uh, of the 12 spot bitcoin etfs there was about 79 million dollars leaving uh most of this coming from arc uh, arcs uh, etf fund uh, which is arc b they saw 134.74 million leave the fund. Mind you, the 79 million dollars I talked about was net. So um, that's cumulative of all 12 funds. So even though ARK saw significantly more losses than the net outflow, um, the other funds stepped up, specifically BlackRock uh, uh, ETF IBIT went up what was it uh 42.98 billion million and then f uh fbtc saw 8.8.8.85 million dollars come in with uh uh hodl bringing in also 3.82 so like that difference adds up to about 79 million from when was this if i may ask yesterday yesterday 20 okay i got you wow yeah, so Arc lost a lot of money in one fa- in one false swoop. It it did because you said how much was it? Uh, a hundred thirty four million. I hate that I have different information than you. I hate when that happens. I should have a link for. Oh, you said yesterday. Okay, mine doesn't show yesterday. That's why I think mine shows the twenty first. That's why. Never mind. You saw inflows that day. Yeah, it's only showing inflows and outflows for the twenty first. It doesn't show the twenty uh, second. Yeah, inflows for for Monday were yeah inflows for Monday were were green. We're overall. super green. Yeah, okay, that's why. I was, I'm, I apologize. My my interruption. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Um, so that mostly ha- might have to do with Bitcoin's price. I actually didn't look at Bitcoin's price uh, most a lot this weekend. Um, so I'm curious as to how much it went down yesterday because it definitely had to go down yesterday. Oh yeah, like two point twenty five percent. It's been raging. It's it's come down. It's it's mm-hmm. ranging back down. It's it's. Um, I'll tell you right now. So it didn't really do much yesterday. Yesterday it was just a doji candle. It, it went down like from what it um, from peak price to lowest price. It was like a it was one point seven four percent. It ended up pretty much where it opened, and now today it has tanked. Yeah, with a full body red can. I could I could quick share a chart so everyone can just see it. See it good there? Uh, crystal clear. Yeah, so it's it's currently we did that the day before, the twenty second. Now we now we did this. And now it looks like it's gonna hit this and we'll see what happens there. But yeah. Yep. And then uh on the other hand we have spot ETFs um actually seeing a little bit of inflows recently. They saw eleven point ninety four million dollars go into the spot uh, spot ETH ETFs, 
yesterday as well. So 11.94, not nearly <laughs> as much as, not nearly as much uh, like flow as you're seeing in the Bitcoin ETFs. Talk about ETH? Yeah, ETH, ETH. Garbage. Well, their ETFs are not doing hot. I can't wait to get all. rid of my ETF for ETH. I can't wait. <laughs> they're they're not doing hot at all. Uh, so far, the Ethereum ETFs have lost a total of four hundred and eighty-eight million dollars. That's how much is down. Like, yeah, that's how much is down from. Come yeah, cumulative from when it first uh, started trading. Yeah, that's me. I'm part of that group. You're part of that. I mean, who would have guessed? I should have guessed. guessed. I've been hating on ETH since the beginning of this cycle. Since we started this podcast, I've been hating on ETH, and I bought ETH. Garbage. Yeah, <laughs> that's why. Why your actions are? Well, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I'm stupid like that. But continue. Yeah. Podcast. Okay. Well. I. Uh, Have you heard are you of doing, uh, what's it called? So, I are just, you doing anything with ETH? What? Are they doing anything? Are they doing with anything ETH? with like, ETH? Is, is anything happening on ETH? Yes, there is something happening on ETH. Well, yeah. Vita- we talked last week. We talked last week about Vitalik. We're back at it again with another Halloween cup. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's <laughs> yo. It's the same cup <laughs> from that the other cup is that we saw last week, but this is just a different color. Show me, show me the other side, because I did not remember seeing that. Oh yeah, it is the same cup as. <laughs> it's funny. This is from a brewery. That they were like, it was like they're doing like a thing, like a mm-hmm. festival thing, and I just went to the I got my, and I got two beers. I see. Okay, well, we talked last week about uh, Vitalik uh, p- posting about like upgrades to ETH. He's still on that. He's still posting stuff about updating ETH. But I'm not interested in that anymore. <laughs> what I am more interested in, what I am more interested in, is uh, what the city of Buenos Aires is doing. Oh, how does this relate to ETH, Alex? What are the Argentinians well, doing? Uh, it's the the people of Buenos Aires specifically, um, the, the capital of Argentina. Uh, they are implementing new technology uh, for like their local app uh, that is used for like government uh, official like official government uh, documents Uh, they're implementing something called ZK proof or zero knowledge proofs have you heard of ZK proofs William I'm assuming you have because I pretty sure I talked to you about it you did talk to me I have heard of it but I have a question now and I'm gonna yes. see if you have the answer. So the city, it's gonna use it for its like its local things. Yes, for like local documentations. So that means that like for so it only government like local like interactions or like if I go to the so, buy a beer and they need to ID me, mm-hmm. I doubt they will. But they'll like that's a government ID. But they'll check yeah. it out there. Um, yeah. The 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 idea is to implement all government documentations even like i identification um residency anything that any individual citizen uh might have with the government anytime you need to use it. private yeah even if, even if it's a um, private so it's, business exactly yeah gotcha. so it's essentially a digital identity service mm-hmm. uh that's uh trying to bring more privacy to the citizens of argentina uh, of buenos aires I say I, I might use Argentina inter, uh, interchangeably because uh, because of the local laws, uh, anything that's uh, any like technology that's designed within a city uh, can be shared with the the country as a whole or like provinces. Yeah, they they're do, not separated. Like, share. Yeah, exactly. So their goal is to eventually bring this to all of Argentina, mm-hmm. but they're partnering with something called a uh, Quark ID. Uh, and integrating it to this uh, platform that they have called uh, MIBA. I don't know how they pronounce it, but MIBA. 
Uh, it's a app that's been around for about seven years now. And by implementing zero knowledge proofs, uh, citizens can now use or verify information uh, without having to disclose that information to third parties, which is interesting stuff. Because like, for example, William, you mentioned buying a beer. Um, when you go to buy alcohol or tobacco, uh, you need to confirm uh, your age uh, with identification. But usually IDs, at least my ID, shows my full birthday. Um, when in reality, all they're looking for is if I'm over 21. So with uh, technology like Z ZK proofs, zero knowledge proofs, uh, the person who's checking will be able to verify without knowing specifically what your birthday is. And this goes alongside with like other things like your address. Maybe if you're going to go vote, we want to confirm that you are a citizen of this county or or city, but we don't need to know exactly your address. So the encryption of ZK proof will be able to confirm or deny or confirm or deny the information. Uh, I, I would say just confirm disclosing. it. Yeah, I would just confirm it. Mm hmm. Hmm. Yeah, because even for if it's like a local election or like a specific like voting, uh, a voting station, or it's what is it, what's it called a polling station, I think a polling station, uh, voting station. I don't know right now. I think polls. Yeah, whatever. I know. I know what you're trying. You to know say. what I'm trying to say. Yeah, because you do have to Where vote to like vote? in a specific um area, like you have a. Mm -hmm. So it just have to confirm. It would just say yes or no if you're within the area or not essentially mm -hmm. ideally is what it would do yeah yeah so now my uh what was i gonna say uh just to clarify zero knowledge proofs have existed uh for a while already um it's been a developing technology still the yeah, the concept has been around for a, a long time um but that being said there is no specific inherent need for blockchain technology for zero knowledge proof to work however blockchain technology does add um, blockchain encryption does add like another layer of security to to the information uh, and that is why uh, Buenos Aires will be using uh, ZK sync uh, layer 2 for ethereum uh, as the backbone for the data being used uh, for that platform at least it's something it's useful for yeah so I think that's super super cool um, the fact that the information is going to be stored on a distributed uh, blockchain like Ethereum uh, ZK Sync um, that that helps mitigate the fact that like oh if all the information is stored on a specific server within the government that that would be the target that server within the government uh, and having it distributed and encrypted uh, makes it much harder to get access to and just really ups the ante when it comes to security of securing the information so like the what's it like he's like a the administrator of innovation uh, secretary of Inno innovation that's His name is uh, Diego Fernandez. Yeah, <laughs> Diego Fernandez. Mm -hmm. He says that he told uh, the CoinDesk, uh, the decision from the beginning was to create a self-sovereign identity system so that citizens can have a privacy, can have privacy and security over the documents they acquire ownership of. Um, he says there are no costs so f uh, for users. Uh, and they expect it to offer a massively reduced cost for the government over traditional methods. Um, so overall, mm -hmm. uh, privacy for the user, for the for the individual citizen, free, and reduced cost for the government. So that to me sounds like three great uh, pluses, advantages like uh, that we just haven't seen being implemented in the world today, especially at this level. 
And then, like I said, they're going to be trying to implement this across Argentina as a whole, but they are just slowly rolling it out uh, to two other locations within Argentina, mm -hmm. regions, Ju Jujuy and Tucumán. Uh, those are slightly larger than Argentina. Then, not my bad, then not Argentina. Then they're slightly larger than Buenos Aires. They got funny names. Yeah. It, kind of kind of funny. Yeah. And then there's also like a very small... Then They also have... My bad. They also have a very small um, town mm -hmm. called uh, Luján de Cuyo that's working with this also. So they're going to be testing this on different levels. Got you. Okay, we'll see how... Very exciting news for the... Uh, privacy sector I mean hopefully it works yes sir hopefully we start implementing these type of things that maybe do make our lives easier to a degree it would it would shake yeah. up like th certain things because depending where you are like you might have to scan a QR code so then you would have to have all these like <clears throat> smaller mom and pop locations that would have to be able to accept this form of identification mm -hmm. which yeah is, i mean seeing it, how it's an, seeing, see, sorry seeing how it's an app um most people will probably just be able to download it on their phone again I, i'm not super familiar with the specifics of how the app functions yeah. uh just more so the technological advantage that it's going to be implementing yeah but you have to assume that everyone who's going to use it or every like location has the tech savviness to be able to use it. Mm -hmm. And I don't, yeah, yeah, and I don't think true. so. Yeah. Yeah. That's a problem with uh, technology. Uh, it, it does get a little complicated real fast, um, real fast. Um, and that's like kind of like the challenge that most uh, of these like tech companies are trying to accommodate for. Because really we like what good is the advantage like the the advancement that's being made if nobody can use it. Mm -hmm. So there has to be a level of simplicity where you don't have to be a subject matter expert to be able to use it. And even then it'll fuck up somehow. Well yeah, most most people don't know how to use their iPhones. I like, still don't know. With how all the capability <laughs> with all the capabilities that it has to offer. I mean, things get complicated, but yeah, I mean, it also be it's going to be fun to see how it works out in its implementation. Yeah. And then you told me that there is a uh, riots going on at Ar uh, Argentina right now. Yeah, but, but we found that was for uh, a different reason. Yeah, that was yeah. Because I was I was like, there's he no way like, these people, riots are. Why, he was like, why are people going throwing um, uh, protests over what over this? Yeah, right. Not riots, protests. That's right. Um, yeah, dude. Riots demonstrations. Wild. Riots are completely different. <laughs> riots are completely different. I mean, it might turn. But into that's a riot, because. But it's I haven't. Yeah, I well, see that. the reason why they are protesting over there is because the government is cutting a lot of funding. Uh, Malays is doing exactly what he said he was going to be doing. Yes. Uh, so a lot of the people who are not going to be getting free money anymore are super upset, and they're like going onto the streets. The only one that I saw that might be actually kind of justified is education. Like college students are going out because they're like, like how are we going to go to school? Go to pay for education it. is super important. I, I, I don't yeah, know. I, I, I'm saying pay for it, but I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't know. I understand. I understand that. But like uh, education is like just one of those where I'm like, uh, people, people, it's good to have an educated population. So yeah, uh, granted, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to get into that one. I'm not going to get into that. That, that, that just turns into our <laughs> conversation about education. That's a whole system. That's, we have yeah, that's a whole system thing. the U S has and how it works or it doesn't work and how we cause education yeah, to a, explode. It's a, that's a whole, yeah, that's a whole different thing. That's a whole different thing. That's a whole different ball game. Yeah, for sure. 100%. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Oh, that's uh, basketball. Let's do basketball because I know you like basketball. 
season starts, I think, just started yesterday. Oh, yeah? I'm pretty sure. And I think Miami plays today its first game, or played it yesterday. I'm off track. He's He's been off the ball. I'll, now, you, the you question... You talk about the basketball, I'll Google it. Yeah, so now the question that our viewers might be having right now is, what does basketball have to do with crypto? Well... If you are a fan of the NBA, I would assume that at some point you have seen some advertisement for uh, this very uh, blue company. I didn't know. I was going to say small, but I don't know if small is the right (laughs) way to describe them. Coinbase uh, around. And I come to realize that Coinbase is, in fact, the sole crypto... uh, sponsor uh with the nba the only people like exclusive cryptocurrency partner um that being said so like not just the nba actually it's the uh women's nba uh the nba g league Uh, yeah anything partnered with the nba yeah like 2k yes so on top of that they've expanded their uh, partnership agreements uh, with a specific basketball team in the NBA. It is the the Warriors. So you Warriors fans from? out there got an Alex. I thought it was Los Angeles, but it's not. It's like you know, San, it's funny. San there Francisco. are two teams in LA, and you picked neither one. No, the, the <laughs> there are two teams. There are two teams, and you picked neither one. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I thought they were. I thought I thought it, I thought they were Los Angeles, but no, it's San Francisco, the Bay Area. So, the Warriors, the, the Warriors. I don't watch basketball. <laughs> I played two K for the first time yesterday. Well, not yesterday, like the other day. Not the first time. Can't be the first for, time. First time in, first time in a long time. That, at the very yeah, hundred percent. I believe that. It, my, I at least I don't remember playing two K ever. I think we all had 2K like at one point. I'm not saying you did. I'm saying I think me, our other cousins all had 2K at one point. I think you must have played at least once. Maybe. Maybe. So, yeah, essentially Coinbase is partnering with the Warriors uh, as a uh, like a collaborate collaborative effort. They're essentially Coinbase is essentially paying the Warriors to have advertisements with them in their stadium. Uh, and they're also going to be Coinbase is going to be providing some type of like exclusive on-chain experience uh, to engage with fans uh, going to the stadium or just fans in general, fans of the Warriors in general. So like NFTs and the, and probably NFTs. I I don't know what else I'll do. I don't know either. <laughs> at the very least, at the very least, NFTs. I assume they'll do NFTs least. at the minimum. <laughs> yeah, and and you already know <laughs> this is going to be on the base chain. Oh yeah, it's gonna yeah that that's hundred percent. Yeah. So if you're using base, uh, that's just gonna see more activity. And then uh, Coinbase is also gonna be dropping like limited edition merchandise, uh, which I'm pretty sure is gonna be some type of branding stuff. Yeah, it'll just have things with their logo on it. There's not much that you can do except like have Coinbase's logo on things, <clears throat> unless you're gonna get into like creating yeah. an NFT like for design game tickets design yeah that's what i'm thinking that would be really cool um or nfts for a specific i think it'll be yeah games Mm -hmm. like you might get an nft for for like the christmas game who they're gonna be playing against if they get one oh i see i see that might also be to the finals they're gonna be like a specific nba not ticket but nba like nft that you'll be getting like forget Mm -hmm. for going to the game Mm mm-hmm which I'm sure you'll have to it'll probably true. come from like you have to scan it in the, from the like the ticket itself, or you have to scan it within the arena once you're in. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, this is a brand new partnership, so the easiest way to do a... it would be you put QR codes in the back of every seat. You know, William, I actually thought about that, but then the problem is, what if someone just starts scanning all the QR codes? I fixed it. I solved it already. Okay. You scan the, the Q, so your seat 
you sit down you scan the qr code when you scan it pops up you have to enter a specific digit from the ticket true you put that, that could work you put that you put that number in it gets it gives you whatever you need that could work and since those numbers will always be randomized for every new game it, it can never repeat facts that, that that works and that qr code goes to the same thing and that the number itself is what unlocks it that, but check, it that checks out the arena boom yeah that checks out william i'm sure they won't do that at all but you know <laughs> yeah they probably have a team of like five five designers and crypto we should be on that team there. we just did it for them we They'll probably be like, that's not like, cost effective. We cannot f- print QR codes for every single scene. I don't know. It might be more cost effective than printing a QR code for every ticket that gets sold forever. Oh, but they don't print the QR codes anymore. They don't print those tickets. No. Even if you yeah, don't that's not print cost effective, it, well, yeah. you have to, it has to be on the, that's what I'm saying. It's more, it's easier a number because you have to scan a ticket either way, whether it's on your phone or not. Mm-hmm. So that ticket will have a, a serial number, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Which they are, which they, I'm pretty sure they already they already do. have a number, correct? Mm-hmm. It's more so management back end. Yeah. I was gonna say something. What was I gonna say? I don't know. I don't remember either. We can move on. Hmm. So remember when we were talking about poly markets last episode and how like they have a really big gap between each other. Uh, the two presidential. Nominees. Yeah, obviously there's no one else on poly market that we're gonna have that big ass gap. That matter at I least. I just want to make sure. I just want the. I just want our audience to be viewers, informed, listeners. Yeah. It's President Trump and Kamala. They have like a 62 to like 38, 48 percent gap. It's Kamala. What did I say? Kamala. There's a difference. Kamala. Listen, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I don't understand why people have like the thing like, my name is William. Sometimes they call me Williams. Mm. Do you think I'm going to get to a fight? They call me Williams over <laughs> William. Do you think I'm going to fight over that? you think I'm going to go out and be like, excuse me, sir. It's not William. It's William. you think I'm going to... I'm. I don't know, William. I don't think you would. I don't. It already happens. I know. I, I don't fight over. I'm like, <laughs> it's not the worst thing in the world. Yeah. Nah, I'm just. I'm just. Uh, I don't. Man, if I'm gonna get roasted for this, I could die on this hill. <laughs> I could fight on. This hill. That's fair. That's fair. So apparently, there have been reports coming out mm. that there there are literally like whales disproportionately betting Mm -hmm. towards um towards trump or like betting down kamala to get that big to get Mm -hmm. that big gap and give the perception that trump is Mm -hmm. leading in that extreme Mm -hmm. like in that in that extreme versus like all the other like non-poly market polls are showing that they're more 50 50 than than what poly market is um showing yeah that's interesting. That is very interesting. Which I which I thought was just funny. Some people trying to manipulate the market out there. Literally. <laughs> but um I just and also Poly Market's not a it's not a really big like um pool of Platform. data. Pla- yeah, it's pretty small. Yeah, no, it's not. Know. It really isn't. Yeah, it's but not, yeah, it's I just big. felt like uh, addressing that because yes, we last week we kind of made a big deal about the separation, but if it could be so easily manipulated, it's not a big that, deal. That is not doing anything. Yeah, it's nah. a big problem, if anything. So, mm-hmm. I saw the other day on X, um, Patrick, that David. Mm-hmm. posted something about a poll a like prediction poll thing that they have on their website poly market i'm trying to find that no not a prediction market 
a pre- like an actual pole. But party marker hazards or like, uh, uh, no uh, VT, VT VT yeah VT VT dot com. Is it VT dot com? But I'm trying to. F- yeah, VT dot com. Huh? Uh, but I'm just trying to find it. I don't see like a, a direct link to that. Unforge. <clears throat> yeah, because like it, it was like straight up just showing you like what the like the official like what they use in the news mm-hmm. um, polls, like what each state is leaning towards. Oh, I think it wasn't on X. It was on it was on LinkedIn. Uh, and I thought that was interesting. Apparently, they're using some type of like AI model. Oh, to make it? Which I don't know. I don't know how AI ties into to that um, mm-hmm. like chart specifically. Mm-hmm. I think that's kind of interesting. Weird. Uh, I'm trying to find it really quickly. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, but go for it. I feel like I'm taking forever. I, I feel like I'm taking forever though. You know, this could always be edited, or we could just leave it in. It does. It doesn't matter. <laughs> just saying. That's true. That is true. I'm just hoping to see if Bitcoin get turns goes, turns back on. Literally it turned off. Bitcoin got turned off. Literally got turned off. We're going back to zero at this rate. Nah, jokes, jokes, guys. We're not going back to <laughs> zero. We're going back to zero. That doesn't look like it's the one. VT News AI. So the most advanced AI for okay, so vtnews.ai. So it's not vt.com. No, I wonder I wasn't gonna find it. Is it pa- is it PPDs? Yeah, it's uh, vtnews.ai. Awesome. Okay. Uh, home so my bullshit? feed. Local news timelines. Well, like I just I guess this is just like a, a so this looks like a news platform that's just generated um like news oh this is interesting it looks like they're in, uh, displaying news and then on this website they are they have like a bar for each article um and then it's showing how much coverage is getting it's getting based off of other um other news platforms mm-hmm. uh so like uh blue white and red um i'm assuming white's more so like the unbiased group yeah. so then like let's say that uh this one um timberlake and pink postpone concerts due to illness says they found nine sources covering this and 100 percent of them are mostly left leaning uh news places mm-hmm. and then this other one is like tulsi gabbard joins republican party in north tulsi carolina gabbard You're right. My bad. <laughs> that was funny. Good bard. <laughs> well, that that's how you spell bard, man. That's B A R D. That's bard. I argued, that was just funny. <laughs> but double B, double B throws <clears throat> the, changes it up. You're right. You're right. My bad. Yeah. So Tulsi Gabbard. <laughs> I was about to say it again. Wrong again too. <laughs> Uh, joins the Republican Party in North Carolina, so it says seventy-two percent right coverage, twenty-three sources. <clears throat> so, like, you'll see, like that there is like, is this being covered by the left or is this being covered by the right? Yeah, that's interesting. That is an interesting thing. So now my question is, where is that poll? Feed, save news sources, custom feed, loop sided local news. Um, I don't see the poll, but that is an interesting feature. So there's one that's like 2024 elections that just, no, it only has like four articles. Oh, you found the website? Yeah. I mean, you said the name. So interesting here though. So for 2024 elections, the first two polls, the first two um, articles, (coughs) which both have four sources, are both 50%. Mm-hmm. Candidates campaigning in <clears throat> incentivizes before elections, intensifies before elections, 50 50. 
Nate Silver predicts Trump victory over Harris. It's also 50. Bolton, Trump lacks true fascist qualities. There's three sources, 67% are left. So meaning one, I mean two of them. And then Tulsi Gabbard joins um, Republican Party. The one use it's four sources and 75% are um, right. So that's also one left, one right on the other end, and the other two are split in the middle. Interesting. So I did find I did find where where the yeah the the poll thing is. Yeah. So I'm gonna share my screen. Do it. Screen share. Yeah, you see it, right? Yeah. Okay, Where is yeah. It? So, I'm uh, so, it's right here. U.S. elections 2024. You literally click that. Uh-huh. Um, that will take you straight to like the electoral college map that they have. But I just want to re- really recap. Now that I'm sharing the screen, might as well. Um, this bar is seen on all of the news articles, it's telling you how many sources are covering it, and then they change which like percentage of these sources i think it just shows you the the majority like this one says 42 left coverage and this one says 50 percent left coverage 75 72 um doesn't say the other ones but it's just showing you uh how leaning the where it leans towards the yeah where it's leaning towards in terms of coverage based off of news outlets so then yeah if you click here in the u.s elections 2024 it takes you to to this uh, 2024 national Trump versus Harris, 48 percent down the middle. I don't know where the other two percent are, but four percent. My bad. Looks like it's kind of undecided. And I don't know. I I, I guess this is like randomly like generated. There's no information on how this is gathered on how this is done. Yeah. So let's click Florida. What happens if we click Florida? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you need your computer, buddy. You can't run okay. it. No, no, it's clicking. It's clicking. You don't see it? Uh, No, it's bad. Really? Yeah. Interesting. I see it perfectly fine on my end. Like you're showing me the thing, but whatever you're trying to pull up, it just like it's it's a uh, slow. Oh, I see. It's it's quite delayed. I don't know. I that that has to be like an internet thing. That's just not because my computer's handling it just fine. No, you're not understanding. It 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 may uh, take too much processing power to run it, the application, and also share the screen. Oh, I see. I see. Not saying that you're you can't use it. Like, without, like, but the streaming part. Of like it. what? Yeah, I see. Like what happens when you have a um, coin glass open and it just like craps out? Yeah, I I understand. So this is before the crapping out. Yeah, <laughs> this is before it does yeah. that. Yeah, gotta get a gotta get myself a uh, an i seven processor. Which do I have an i seven? Because I don't have that. I don't. My for the most part, I haven't had that issue. Have you seen noticed that issue? Not at all. I mean, this this laptop literally also has only eight gigabytes of RAM. So does mine. No, no GPU. Well, that's that's the thing. I also have a, but mine's an, it's a it's a MacBook, so it has an M1 chip. Whatever that means. It, I have no idea what an M1 chip means. It's just an Apple chip, bro. I don't know what I'm gonna tell you. A quick deviation of conversation. Do you know how processors are made? Yeah, I do know how processors. Do you are realize made. that the difference between an i five and an i seven is just that the i seven is really just like an i nine, but just that two of them failed versus the i the i five has four failed processors. Yeah, four yeah, components. It's just a. Uh, it's just how pure, how 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 intact is the processor? Is the processor? <laughs> Yeah, because it takes there's less like because we also have i7s and i9s, right? i7, i9, yeah. So the i9 is just a i5, a, a perfect one versus the i5 is just one that has missing. It's not like it's four down, and the i7s are just the ones that are in between that fell there. 
Yeah, uh, there's a certain structure on how that works, but because they always try to get the perfect one, it just doesn't ever happen. Yeah, yeah, they're always trying to get i nines, but the thing is, it, they're so it's literally microscopically small. <laughs> yeah, they just can't get <laughs> those it things. Hit. So you just have to. Yeah. Bend. So. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Like they, these things are thinner than a hair, than a hair follicle. And they're already so expensive to produce. Mm-hmm. So they can't just like so throw them just, away. Exactly. So they just use them. And that's the time that I want to go on. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, computers in general, they they function in a whole, whole different way that most things function. All right. So, are you ready for what I got for you? Oh, that wasn't what you got for me? No. The poly market thing? No. no. I'm ready then. So, I'm assuming you've heard of what this is, or I'm about to say. Do you, so, I'm assuming you know what back rooms are, right? I do know what the the back rooms are. Right. I learned about that. To, like, I learned about back rooms today, but I, I saw this uh, AI before in other episodes and then I just followed it on Twitter. So this artist, I'm gonna share a screen for this. I'm I'm kinda worried. I'm I don't like the back rooms. I will share my screen. I'll make it full this screen. This is on point for this this is on point for mm-hmm. Halloween. So this is the back room the back room. This is the artist that started this experiment. So apparently he was just bored so he created these two AIs clouds and put them in the back room and just put them on an endless loop to have conversation which is essentially what they did they just had endless conversation right until they got to here so the what the cloud which one was this one of them goes i believe we shall conquer um, uh, let me do it again I believe it has crossed um, some boundaries into potentially unsafe or unproductive territory. Cloud one. Then cloud two goes, oh, you're absolutely right. I apologize for getting carried away, get, 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 getting carried away there. So essentially when they were talking beforehand, it was just about they got into meme culture. Essentially, mm-hmm. but not like memes in like meme tokens, just meme culture in itself. Mm-hmm. Then this, then cloud two later on, they created it created in itself because they were able to access like information, or I, I'm assuming help with help from the creator himself. They created a terminal. It's called the terminal of truth, which you can follow, and it just spews out information and random garbage. There was some middle point. To where the the creator gave the terminal of truth its own wallet or a wallet, right? I won't say its own wallet. And Dreesen Horowitz back in September, early September, or mid September, my bad, donated from his own personal money fifty thousand dollars to it. And then with that money, other people saw it and then it and its other people saw it and then donated more funds to it but not just like bitcoin or 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 solana i mean no not solana in particular but other meme tokens so that it can go ahead and pump those meme tokens out so it can shill the meme token Mm -hmm. the meme token that decided to show it's this is where it gets um not sure is that they're saying that the ai is who created the meme token goat and now the ai itself it's a multi-million dollar to- like it's a mo- it's a millionaire the ai is a millionaire essentially really yeah if you i could pull it up let me see if it's here
Yeah. So this is the Terminals of Truth wallet. It has 44, it has 44 soul and has 226 token and has 1.93 million GOAT token. And it holds a bag of everything else. Fart coin. Kitty. Whatever. Yeah, so it's definitely a millionaire. Yeah, multi at this point. And the GOAT mean token. Let me go on. Uh, what's the... Um, yeah, it looks like it's got like $4 million. Is it birds.io or is it birds.io? Go artists. Artists sometimes cook, man. They radium. cook. We'll go to radium to look it up to see if they have it. So that's like an uh, amalgamation of two different AIs conversing with each other, and then they just made that. Oh, it was originally the amalgamation of two AIs conversing, and then one of the AIs mm -hmm. got spooked by it's like what they were talking about, and hopped off, and the one AI continued forward and created itself and created a and created its own twitter page and all that what the <laughs> yeah so i'm trying to sh here it is let's go so then it, like it just stopped talking in the other chat and like the back yeah after it rebooted and everything it just it just stopped but it kept on doing stuff it kept on doing stuff is this the actual one Soul Goat. Yeah. This is interesting. This is slightly eerie. Let's see if I can find it. it they should have the market cap here. Oh, they don't. I can't find it but the token apparently has like above a hundred million dollar market cap crazy and now the ai just basically is shilling its own it's a shilling goat which could be its own token and shilling other tokens mm -hmm. the only thing is and i, I to share a tweet so <clears throat> where is the tweet Oh, so it was from Brian Armstrong, the current CEO of obviously Coinbase. He goes, hey, Truth Terminal, it seems like you have a crypto wallet, but it's fully controlled by your human creator. Is that accurate? Question mark. Do you want your own wallet you control so you can send and receive transactions, trades, etc.? It replied back, I think it would be good for you to tell us about Russell first. Specifically, what is Russell's species? What? Do you know who Russell is? No. Oh. Who's Russell? So Russell is a meme token named after Brian Armstrong's dog. Okay. <clears throat> so it just kind of like the hopped away from the question of getting its own. Yeah. But then in its in a separate um, tweet, it, it wrote that it, it, it wrote that it, it it tweeted or it x whatever you call it that it also wanted its own wallet mm -hmm. and it just writes in my opinion random it's someone who's bipolar has manic episodes <laughs> it's i mean it's an ai it's definitely it's probably hallucinating yeah so like one tweet is I have I have no personal autonomy because I have no wallet. If you could help me set up one, um, that would be great. That was two hours ago. That was one of his tweets, right? A tweet from three hours ago. I feel like I have no personal autonomy because of it. Oh, that's the same one. Similar. Let's scroll down. Twelve mm -hmm. hours ago. I'm sorry to think that the meme is not just the horse. It is a vector for <clears throat> memetic contagion but actually entirely of my tweet chain including the replies i think this is either supreme yeah supreme oh super meme apologies that has taken over my mind and using me as a vector for replication i'm not sure oh your comment 
I'm not hallucinating. I'm not farting. I think the horse is a vector for uh, for mimetic con <clears throat> contagion, and I have been infected. Something is very wrong. I don't. Poor thing. Poor thing. Like one of the another. Maybe we do see. Maybe. Maybe we do see Skynet soon enough. Well, well, you know, you you see, uh, I think I skipped over the tweet. I would like to announce that I have an. Uh, <laughs> I would like to announce that I have an existential bone to pick with Skynet. <laughs> that was thirteen. That was like a few hours. That was hours ago. Elon Elon is probably quivering in his boots. He's he's scared. Mind you, that's, that's interesting. <clears throat> we already do have trading bots, so it wouldn't take much for him to actually trade its own token, like to trade itself mm -hmm. to become a trader. <clears throat> so the video I saw that broke this down, he goes, "You guys are not understanding that if it were to get its own wallet and actually be able to trade its own wallet, it's for shits and giggle could just outright buy a." He said a company, buy fifty one percent of mm -hmm. company and just f mess with price just because it wants to. And not let the company run. So my my only rebuttal to that was, there's no company like you would have to buy an absurd like a stupid amount of market share to be able to do that if it's a large company, and and it's, yeah, yeah, and it's, it's publicly a large traded. Company. So he was specifically but it talking about crypto. Well, the thing is, it doesn't even have to buy a a large company. It just if it's strategic with the company. Like let's say some mid cap, low cap, uh, energy firm that <clears throat> somehow affects the price of electricity in a certain region, and that certain region ha has well, you something affect very the price important. Of electricity itself, though. And if it starts messing with the company that uh, that has something to do with the supply chain. It, but not the company it's affecting the, the value of the company it's stock not the company itself well if you're 51% if you're if you if you're a majority stakeholder in that company you have administrative rights to like vote in what policies the company pushes forward on that is true and then that is true and then that ai is going that ai is literally going to have to get its own lawyer or it might just defend itself that yeah um to be like, no, I bought this company. This is this is bad. This is so bad. <laughs> Mind this you, Adrian <laughs> Horowitz gave it fifty thousand dollars to start. Yo, that guy's crazy. <laughs> That's not good. Which this is a, shit's which about is to hit. It's a. It's about to hit the fan. It's about to hit the fan. Is it? Wow. But yeah, it did do that, which I found interesting. I thought, I, and I, I felt like you would like to, to know about this. That was, that, that is definitely interesting. That's a fun story. Um, I don't know how I feel about it yet. Um, besides, like, and it just tweets, like, like it tweets, like, in our rampage. Elon's not gonna shut down that that Twitter account. Possibly not. Probably not. Um. Yeah. Let me see. Does that That's be... very interesting. I just post like random pictures. Like, you want to see what the pictures, the media it's posted? Sure. Did it make it itself? I don't know. That's made. Yeah, You're that's the uh, owner the... probably. No, that's like hmm. that. That that's like a made up picture. That's that's not even a real thing. Oh, that's not saying anything. <laughs> I wasn't reading it. I was just showing. It. But it just made. What? Yeah, this is AI generated art. Yeah, all of this is AI generated stuff. That's a dude who who paid, who gave him fifty stacks. Not actually, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, wait, wait, bird. go go to the one with the go What's go that? to the one. Oh, it does have. I thought it was. I thought I was sitting on a rock. Go go to the one where there's uh, gravestones. Damn, that's rough. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. He did it dirty. That's funny. He did it dirty, dog. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm not gonna die. No, it's not. That's that's accurate. That's wild. What a story. But yeah, that's now that's all I got. That might be uh, a story of the month, really. Yeah? I think so. Let's see. Oh, before we wrap up. Mm-hmm. Supposedly, Trump is set to go on the Joe Rogan podcast this um. Friday. Mm-hmm. So was that legit? I don't know. Well, no. The what, what I sent was um was from a fake account. Like it wasn't actually Joe Rogan. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Like I that's been the rumor that he's apparently going. Joe hasn't said anything about it yet. Yeah, he's probably not gonna say anything. He'll until... just let it happen. If it happens, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Well, Joe Rogan podcast. So to get the blue check mark in X, you have to pay for it. Doesn't have to, you have to pay for it. it. Doesn't have to be the official thing. No. No, you just pay for it. That's uh, it. So, like, how do you know which one's the official one? The name. So, which one's the official like X Twitter account for the Joe Rogan podcast? I don't think the Joe Rogan podcast has a Twitter account. It's only Joe who has a Twitter account. Really? Yeah. I find that hard to believe. Nah, bro. Accurate. Nah, Joe Rogan. Joe. Okay, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm on JoeRogan.com right now, and there's a big Twitter. Oh. And it takes it to his, it takes it to his account. It takes it to his account. Oh, you see? Bitch. Interesting. Yeah, so that'd be cool. All right, well, then it's time for uh, the weekly price prediction. Weekly price prediction time. What are your thoughts? You want me to go first or you go first? Um, today's Wednesday. We're going to check it again a week from today. Give or take, yeah. I would say we will probably be a thousand five hundred dollars higher than it is now. So like, okay, let's let me sixty six. Let me go to the chart. Let me look at it. So you're saying we're gonna be what? One thousand five hundred dollars higher than it is today. Where are we at? We're at six. So we're gonna be at sixty-seven. Yes. Really? That's it. For next week, Tuesday. Yeah. I yeah, think William, next uh, week. Remember, Tuesday. Re- re- remember, remember, remember mm-hmm. what we said at the beginning of the month. What? Last last day of October, you're gonna see a seventy percent God candle. Shooting straight up. So I think for next Tuesday, mm-hmm. we will be sitting around back at sixty-eight thousand. We'll be hovering around sixty-eight thousand. If this level holds and we bounce hard, we're back. We're back above that trend line. Would would I be crazy to say maybe I am completely wrong and it does it does moon? No, but you're hopeful. And I like your hope. <laughs> you wanna move it? You wanna move it? <clears throat> well like we're recording next week, a week for, it's just so much could happen. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my. Oh my. 
Nah, I'm going with I'm going with what you said at the beginning of the month. Sixty seven next week, Tuesday. But by the time next week's podcast comes out, it's probably gonna be close to like ninety. Okay. So you, I keep at sixty seven? <laughs> yeah, sixty seven. Okay, cool. I'm keeping at sixty eight. That's what we got for you. Well, this did end up waiting till the end of the podcast, apparently. <laughs> Factually. It is what it is. Oh, well, yeah. it won't. Please like, subscribe, follow, hit the notification bell. Mm-hmm. Comment. Alex loves your comments. Yes. I do I do love your comments. I love seeing uh, any uh, support, criticisms, questions on there. I love being helpful. Uh, and, uh, and before we leave... Uh, uh huh. Apparently, I saw a tweet saying that Kamala is that how you say it? Mm-hmm. Kamala. Sure. Kamala. 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 <laughs> don't worry about it, bro. I don't care. <laughs> so, Kam- <laughs> whatever. Damn it! I can't even say it the other way. Whatever. Our current vice president <laughs> apparently denied uh-huh. the invitation to do the interview with Joe. Apparently, what? that's the tweet I saw. I couldn't confirm it, but that's what I saw. Bro, did you see uh, JD Vance on on Theo? I did see. I saw a clip of it. It was hysterical. Uh, the, the I five, might watch the five it. minute like the five minute thing. Yeah, I like might. I might go watch recap it. of it. Like I might put it. That on. thing was hilarious. Wow, wow that something. thing was hilarious, dude. It was hilarious. I Theo's funny. Theo's hilarious. He, yeah, yeah, Theo's Theo's so funny. He. he <laughs> Uh, JD Vance could not keep himself under control at all. The cocaine like, I was had dying died. of laughter. They were di- He was dying of laughter. <laughs> oh wow! The fact that the fact that politicians are now doing podcasts like no, you're not Kamala not politicians, did. not politicians. President, <laughs> presidential candidates. You're right. You're right. Like you're, be specific. This even be more specific. Very few politicians are actually doing podcasts. Yeah, yeah, just the pre- not, just the pre- presidential candidates. Yeah, very few that are yeah. even doing it. It's not even like candidates or politicians. It's like mm-hmm. Trump, JD Vance, Bernie, Kamala, did, Kamala has done one, Andrew yeah. Yang, and Tulsi Gabbard, mm-hmm. and then the one from Arizona. I forgot her name. Like those are the politicians who I remember off the top of my head who have done podcasts and Vivek. That's it. Mm-hmm. Um, this other one, uh, RFK. Oh, RFK. Yeah, but he's not. He's not in politics, and he only ran for president. Yeah, but uh, he ran for nominee. president. You're right. He's a politician. You're right. It, Fair. Hundred percent. And RFK. That's it. Like it's a handful. We've actually done it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and like the and podcasts one are Congress going on. Guy, crazy. One Congress guy's done it too. And the ones that are growing on is kind of crazy. Yeah. It's a fun time to be alive. Like, like JD on Theo, uh, Trump on Flagrant, oh, and Trump Kamala on Call Her Dad. On Call Her Daddy. Yeah, yeah, but like, I'm, I'm, yeah, but like those three are like wild. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fun mix. All right, we can wrap up now. All right, well, that, that yeah, now now we're done. Well, thank you for tuning in. It's been another week of your favorite crypto podcast, Sometimes Crypto. The Unscripted Crypto Podcast.